everybody. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with the cast of Outlander. Season five of the Stars drama premieres on February 16th, where we'll follow the Frazier family celebrating a wedding, settling into life on Frazier's Ridge, and preparing for the American Revolution. Joining me today to unpack it all are stars Katrina Balf, Sam Hewen, Sophie Skelton, and Richard Rankin. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. First of all, can we just give it up for your fans? I know, it's Thank amazing. You. We recognize so many faces here as your, well. It's awesome. Hi, guys. I'm who are yes. freezing right now. Your fans show up Scotland. no matter what. I have to say the, the Outlander fans always keep me accountable. I have to make sure I am prepped and ready because you guys will call me out, won't you? <laughs> I know you will. Um, I want to just start off by saying I got to check out the season five premiere. It was so emotionally fulfilling for me because we start with the wedding. Yay. Right. So there, and you're like, we get married that? again. We yeah, 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 we do. <laughs> and we have a photo of the four of you uh, from that. Is this the first time we're seeing all four characters together? Well, yeah. I think um, episode one is the first time all four of us are in the same place at the same time, yeah. which is yeah. very exciting. Yeah. It actually felt like a party. We all got to actually work together, which was fun. Yeah, and not just the four of us. I mean, it was pretty much Everyone. the whole family are there. Yeah, the Children entire included. the entire extended Fraser family. It was very cool. How cool is that for you guys as actors? Because you guys have worked together in different scenes and different dynamics, but being the four main leads, like, did how just fun was that just to get to play these dynamics out finally? We had no fun, did we? <laughs> we never have any fun. No, it's it's really great. You know, I I think. You know, Sam and I, obviously, when we started in season one, it was such a different cast. And now it really feels like we've reestablished the core group of people and it feels really settled. And, and it's just been amazing to watch these guys like really blossom since they came in in like season two and three. And it's just been a really special thing. And I was watching the credits, and I see that you and Sam are both producers this season. Um, yes, give it up. Thank you. So why was that important for you, and how did it change your experience on set? They were really bossy. We were really bossy. They were so <laughs> tough on us. Sacked a lot of people. I think, I think you know, we were given the, the, the credit sort of later on in the process of breaking down the scripts. But I think, you know, as the season goes on, I think we had more and more influence. And it was great just to be part of that creative process and, and see also the work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, I think it's important. You know, obviously, we've been on the show now for six and a half years. And I think with any job, you want to be able to grow and um, learn new things. And I think for us, it's been really good this season to just learn so much about the production process um, and hopefully continue to do more of that as well. Does it make you look at the characters differently? Maybe not so much the characters, but you, you, you're you looking at it less myopically. So usually when you approach a script as an actor, you're looking at it pretty much solely from your character's perspective. But now it's you definitely start to take a broader view of things, which is really yeah, good. And also just, you know, yeah, the, the bigger picture and also look understanding what goes on behind the scenes. You know, we, we've been attending the production meetings and, you know, as an actor, you come on set, you don't really think about, you know, how all the decisions that have gone on behind that. And we see how, how early on these decisions are made. And it's it's really great to be part of that process. It's so cool. I was like very happy when I saw your names in the credits. I was like, go team. You. Um, Just don't blame us for anything. <laughs> Uh, we ended season four on a bit of a cliffhanger where Jamie, uh, we see, is going to face uh, a huge dilemma in season five. You know, basically, Murtaugh is a father to him, and he's been sent on the task of chasing him down. So take me through some of what Jamie has to battle in the next season um, when it comes to his loyalties, because now his family's there, and he's got a lot... The, the stakes are just a lot higher. Yeah, I mean, the, this is probably one of the biggest departures from the books, the Murtaugh storyline, um, and... You know, we know that Diana has, you know, famously said when she kills a character, they remain dead. But, um, but I honestly think it's one of the stronger storylines I have this season, or Jamie has. It's, you know, for him to be stuck in this place. He's a man of loyalty. He's a man of honor, and family is so important to him. And Murta has always been there for him. This sort of quiet father figure, you know, a real, a real guide to him. And I think for Jamie now to have to be in the situation where he, he's trying to do the greater good and look after his people and the people at the Fraser's Ridge, but also look like he's hunting down his godfather. So it, it, it is, he's stuck in a really difficult situation. Yeah, because thanks to Claire, he knows he's on the wrong side of history. Yeah, so he sides with the British and he knows that obviously with his foreknowledge that they are the losing side. But yeah, he's trying to, he's trying to provide for everyone here. He has so much more responsibility than, than probably any other season. Yeah, and that's why I feel like the stakes are even higher because of the family dynamic. And we see that with Claire. Claire has to be one of my favorite heroines on TV. She is so bold and... Woo. 
just as a modern day woman, you imagine how it would feel to be in that situation. And she always plays it kind of true to who she is. Um, but seeing her get closer with her daughter, we start to see more vulnerability. And so in season five, how does that affect how she moves through this world? Because now, again, for her, the stakes are even higher. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, the more you have, the more you have to lose. And I think that that's a real, um, a real kind of theme of this season in many ways. You know, the, the conflict of Claire loving having her family close to her, but also wanting the best for Brianna and wanting Brianna to be in a place where she can, you know, be the best version of herself. And, and I think, you know, she can see how both Roger and Brianna are struggling in this time to sort of find their way. Um, and, you know, for, for Claire this season, it's a lot about that relationship, but also about, you know, the conflict of knowing a lot and from the future, especially medically wise and everything. And then how much can she use and how much can she implement without getting herself and her family in trouble? Because they just really can't accept witches. It's like, I know. this witch is helping like, people. On. Why do we care? Give her a scalpel. Why is no one down with the Wicca? It's like <laughs> and um, I think for so many of us, watching Brianna and Claire come together was like wildly therapeutic um, because that mother-daughter dynamic was so fraught and we could feel the tension. And then as those walls came down, you guys had so many emotional scenes in, in season four. So for you, was there one that was most memorable or that you were most looking forward to playing or you felt the most emotionally connected to? Oh, in season four, well, it was definitely, I think, that scene that we had in the in the wild garlic field. Yeah. Um, no, but where Brianna sort of tells uh, Claire what she's been through and, and Sophie so beautifully acted by you. And she's it was just such a strong storyline for you. And, and it, it felt really beautiful to be able to, I don't know, just be there and support you in that. Yeah, it was one of those things where we finally got to properly work together in season four, really, didn't we? Because obviously a lot of season two and three was the 60s stuff with the three of us, but that was the very much sort of strained mother-daughter relationship. And then to actually sort of see them start to grow together and become friends. And especially now as Brianna becomes a mother, they sort of have that mutual respect too. And I think they see each other more as equals more as friends sometimes and sometimes we get that lovely role reversal too which we kind of saw a glimpse of in season three where Claire shows her vulnerabilities and you know Brie almost becomes the mother and it just oscillates a lot and it's just really lovely to see. I have to say that Roger and Brianna got rocked last season. I mean, you guys, your characters came in and just really got the full treatment of what life was like. For you two, you know, in the previous seasons, you had less to do. And last season, we really got to see the depth of your character. So I want to ask each of you, just how did that change your experience on set? Just really getting to dig into some of these very difficult storylines. Well, we would always say when we were filming the second season and third season scenes, we can't wait to go back and join everyone. Yeah. In the 18th century, we're missing the rest of the cast. We haven't really worked with them before. We'd be filming scenes in libraries and you know, by the fireside, drinking whiskeys. And then we got there into the 18th century in the fourth season, we were like, what were we complaining about? <laughs> Suddenly, I want to go it, home. Like, yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because it did used to feel like we were almost on two different shows. I still remember that day when, um, so we have something called an Easy Up, which is just sort of a green room because we're that exotic on Outlander that Basically we get a tent. glorified Wendy um, house, if you remember what they are. There was one day where we were on two different stages and we were filming a 60s scene and these two were in the 18th century. And we got to the green room and they'd stolen all of our snacks and left just like a little celery stick and a cucumber stick. And actually we couldn't really complain because they were traipsing around bucks. bloodied mud, you know, and everything. And we were there in this warm 60s clothing. So it's been nice to actually all work together. And as we said, you know, with the wedding one, to all be in a scene together because of the time travel element and everything else is really rare. So it just, I don't know, felt I like family. It's fair to say that this season you guys get kind of rocked even more, I think. Uh, really? You know, no I real, felt so <clears> bad yeah. for both of them. There's no real lead up to in Outlander. Enjoy the wedding because it goes south really quickly. <laughs> I will live in that happiness. Uh, how? What is it like having a baby on set? Because there's been babies on the show, but What's it we're still like in therapy. A baby on set? Um, it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, can I just say for the record, Katrina and I are full-time babysitters anyway. Um, exactly. So, I don't you know. know what you mean. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's great. Um, no, the twins are amazing. I think we had about five sets of twins for Jemmy. Um, Halfway through the season, Jemmy ages a fair bit, uh, just to make life a little bit easier. But um, no, it's amazing. It's tough. It's it's hard work. 
they say don't work with children and animals, and I think in Outlander that's pretty much all. But the, the, actors, all the, the um, actors that play Jamie, though, they are endlessly entertaining. Some of the things that they would come out with. Oh, little Matthew and Andrew are the funniest. It's but it's just it's a really tough age. So they're like two and a half, three. Mm-hmm. And so their, their their chat is amazing, but it's like they'll do a take and it'll be so perfect. And then he'd be like, all right, I'm done now, I'm going home. Yeah. And we're like, no, we have to do this 15 more times, you know, from, and he's like, I don't want to do this acting anymore. I'm going home. I'm doing but they one tell more. you as they come on set, I'm doing one acting one and acting then I'm done. I'm gone. One acting home. and I'm gone. We've become quite good at bribing children, haven't we? Yeah. Like mummy and daddy will give you lots of chocolates when you get home. I know, those another take, And his mum's in the corner like, not happy. That's amazing. But, yeah. um, Richard, I have to say that Roger did everything in the name of love. He really had a tough uh, season. Do you think he really underestimated uh, what life was going to be like for him as like a scholarly man going back to this? As a scholarly, as, a, as an awesome warrior mercenary, <laughs> you like, mean? No oh, fighting but. skills, yes. no awesome. trade. Did he kind of underestimate things a little bit? No, I don't think he underestimated it at all. I think he had a very good idea what he was getting into. And I think he was uh, very well aware that he wasn't and isn't equipped yeah. to be dealing with the 18th century. I think he thought it would be a quick in and out job. <laughs> Get in, rescue Brianna, go home. Didn't quite work out that way. Now they're stuck. And I'm now interested, he's stuck. I'm most interested to see how things are gonna play out with Jamie and Richard. Are we gonna sort of explore their relationship more? Because I can't imagine that Jamie's very impressed. Bye. Yeah, I think we see that in the, the first scene of the, the premiere. And I think, uh, you know, he's not the son that I think Jamie would like for his wonderful daughter. And um, But, you know, he has his own qualities. And uh, This I is actually Jamie's wedding speech, by yeah. the way. So thank you all for coming. And uh, <laughs> uh, But I think, you know, th- we, we do explore that this season. We get to see J- Jamie and, and Roger really sort of bond and, you know, come to an understanding. And I think, you know, Roger's skills lie elsewhere. They're not the stereotypical uh, skills that Jamie would, would imagine were required. Where but do his skills lie? Yeah, Pretty we're still trying to figure skills, that out. Well, well, I guess we'll find out by the end of the season. But, Sing your way out um, of a battle. But they do, yeah, they do get closer, a lot closer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, love is a huge part of this show. You two are grandparents now, first of all. Thanks for reminding us. Yep. So yep. is that, how fun is that to get to play characters? You've been playing these characters now for so long and they're aged now beyond your actual lot, years. <laughs> Fall asleep in the chair. <laughs> uh, have our cup of Horlicks and then just have a little nap. Yeah, a little nap. Yeah. But has it been fun to age these characters and do you bring something different to them now? Well, we've aged a lot as well. So uh, we've brought that with us. Um, no, yeah, I mean, for sure. It's I think both of our characters are very different people to who we started in, in season one. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of that is just the experience and, and it's so great having this body of work behind us. It's like you've got these bank of memories built in for the character. And, and you know, but it, I think it's also, there's a, a comfortability within oneself that happens with age. And I think with having one's family around and doing what you love, all of that brings that kind of settled nature or something. So I think, especially for Claire anyway, I think she's a lot less um, flighty or a lot less uh, like, yeah, temperamental than she used to be yeah. maybe. Yeah, I think they I think they both have sort of settled more. You know, Jamie used to be quite tempestuous and he would act on, you know, he was a man of action and I think he's kind of, grown into himself and become I think a lot more like Colm you know a great thinker as well and a strategist and um, I think that you know it's nice to see that side of him too that he he would rather think and before he acts that's why it's nice to have Brianna there because she's so much like him and she's still yeah. so fiery yeah. and you kind of get to see that he has calmed down when you have kind of like the younger version of him in those ways yeah. Yeah. she definitely inherited the hot headed phrasiness um, she has a little bit of a temper, but yeah. you know. But it, again, you know that starts to calm down this season. She puts sort of puts all of her concentration into Jemmy now, and she has to think of sort of him above herself. So, yeah, maybe the temper is calmed slightly. She can keep the temper. I enjoy it. I feel like she needs it in this time. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, feisty phrases. Feisty phrases. And on the romance tip, I did mention you guys play grandparents. Um, are they still as romantic and hot and heavy as they used to be? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's always going to be there. Yeah. 
I think there's a lot also, like, it's romantic. Like, there's a lot that they yearn for that they still haven't had together. I mean, we see this season without giving away too much, but, you know, there's there's a life that they haven't lived together that, that, that yeah, there's still romance and there's still this yearning for each other. And when they're apart, they, they need to reconnect. And when they do reconnect, it's, you know, it's, it's passionate. But also, you know, they're sounding boards to each other as well. Yeah, you know, I think this of, season like, especially we see a real... You know, we, we've taken the time to sort of explore how their marriage works and how they support each other. And, you know, as, you know, Jamie, he's so conflicted this season about what is going on with Myrta. And you see Claire really being that kind of support for him and vice versa later on in the season. You know, Jamie's the support for Claire. And it's beautiful to see that counterbalance within their marriage about how they always kind of pick each other up when they're down. And, mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful thing. And we've actually just got the first four episodes. We've seen those, and there's all these beautiful moments where you kind of see... I think you forget that Jamie and Claire actually never got to raise a baby together. So even when, you know, they're looking after Jemmy and things, you almost see that youthful side of new parents through them, which is really cool, because I feel like you forget that. that there are some really beautiful moments in the pilot with the family, and I had those same uh, revelations. I was like, oh, they didn't really get to do this. And it just made that even more emotional and connected you because you're like, they're in a happy moment. We know things are going to get worse, but right now they're so happy. Yeah, we, we allow the fans in, to, of the, in the premiere to, you know, to, to have a moment. and Lull them into a false yeah. sense of security. And, then... and on the topic of romance, now we have you two and you guys are married. Um, is there any pressure given just the iconic love scenes on this show for you two walking into that space? Just a tad. I think yeah, that, that wedding episode did rather well, didn't it? <laughs> but I think, you know, I, I think for Roger and Brie, they are the sort of geekier version and they're not Aww. always... You keep a, saying that. Though. I think we are here just to contrast with them, just to highlight how great they are. So we don't... Oh, shit. See? Didn't uh, see I it. I told you. Wow. <laughs> Can't take him anywhere. Just knocking the Jamie place Jamie Fraser down. would never knock over a drink. Never. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just not cool enough. <laughs> But no, I think that's a beautiful thing about the show, though, because you have this idealistic relationship where you know that these two people are so strong as a team and all of these external circumstances are thrown at them, but they battle it together. Whereas I think with Roger and Brie, it's not so much the external circumstances. I think it's the internal arguments that can often pull them apart. They don't communicate as well. And I think it's great that it just shows, you know, those completely different relationships and how, you know... But also you guys are so much at the start of your relationship still and and it's yeah. you know to watch them kind of try and figure their way out of these early problems and and you know they also come to Claire and Jamie for advice and that's really nice you know Claire and Ro Roger have a really nice scene where they sort of talk about relationships and Brianna and Claire obviously discuss it quite a bit so and I teach yeah. you to hunt <laughs> Well, he's needing some teaching. He's, uh, Wait, do you guys hunt bees as well? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Clean up after yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but you two are also from a different era. I mean, she's coming from the 60s, you're coming from the 60s, and like I think you just have different... You know, it was different when you had somebody like Jamie who was so traditional and old school. You do have these two very modern people sort of butting heads, and it makes sense mm -hmm. because of where they come from and sort of the ob obstacles they're facing. Yeah, they are from a, obviously a very different time, and... Um, Brianna's obviously a very modern woman, even for her time. Yeah. So I think that lends itself to a lot of conflict between them. Roger is very is very traditional, even for his time. And Brianna's obviously a kind of juxtaposition of that. But I love that about them. I love that kind of fieriness between them. But in season five, I think they're, they're a very different relationship to what we saw in season four, I think. They are much more kind of united in season five and they kind of tackle things a lot more together, I think. I think also it's it's such a more modern idea to identify with your career. And I think that having not them both being in, in the 18th century and not having that identity is a lot more terrifying or it, it kind of rocks their security a lot more than if Roger was a man of this time, he would just be a farmer or be a... Yeah, he's required to provide for yeah, his wife, and you know. So I think it's it's kind of affects. Yeah, he's well. kind of stripped down. Yeah. But I suppose they both are to a certain extent. You can't really teach are, history when you're in it, can you? Well, no, and there are things I think that are right. inherent in men of that time of Roger's age, and I think those are the things that even you know Jamie sees are absent in Roger that he would have had he grown up through that time. And he's going to have to grow up quick because the American Revolution is just around the corner and there's a good chance he's going to have to participate. I'm interested for you guys. None of you are American. Um, was there 
a learning curve to learning about this bat all of these battles. I mean, these are huge battles in American history and sort of the the nature of that war. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely growing up in Ireland, we did not study the American history in too do. much detail. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot of it was very new and uh, we had to kind of learn up on it. Yeah, and it's complex. And, and certainly, I think, you know, going back to the storyline is that, you know, we're, we're sort of stuck in between the two sides. And uh, as, you know, history approaches, I think, you know, we, we start to feel that, mm. that tightening of the noose, shall we say. Has anybody seen Hamilton? Yes. It's really all the studying you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. It's, it's great. like impossible to get a ticket to. <laughs> I feel like you could get a ticket. I don't know. <laughs> if you can't, I'll hook you up. I know people. I've seen it twice. It's fantastic. Oh, okay. It's awesome. You have yeah. to go on your own. You can always get a ticket if you go on your own. That is true. Because it's just that one. Or on the, on the end. All go together. On our own. Sit separately. <laughs> <laughs> In the obstructed view seats on the side. It, it's funny seeing it as a Brit, though, I think, because it is, you guys are wonderfully patriotic, but when you go and see something like Hamilton, you've just got all these Americans like, woo, yeah, halfway through, and you're just feeling very British. Like, oh, didn't get that reference, that's fine. <laughs> but it's great. Uh, we do have some questions from the audience before we get out of here. The first one comes from Twitter. Um, if Outlander was able to do a crossover with any series that is currently on, which show would they choose? Cheer. Cheer. <laughs> oh wow! Cheer. Let's unpack that. You guys answered very quickly. Totally cheer, Jerry. Oh, Jerry all the way. Yes. Jerry for president. I yeah. mean, I, I yeah, I, I've been very much into cheer. It's so good. What is it about the show? It's They're, just those kids are amazing. They are amazing, aren't they? It's the hard work. It's the struggles that they've all been through, and it's the fact that they are so tight as a unit, and. It's just amazing what they achieve. And also just how physically demanding and crazy it is and the hours they put in. I met Jerry and, you know, I may have had a drink you or two. You met Jerry? And I just, the poor guy, I was like, you guys are just so amazing and you just have so much heart. And it was, yeah. I, great show. And also, you know, you you, you care for these, these people and, and now they're sort of kind of going into adulthood and going into the big world and you just sort of, I don't know, I care about them. I want to know that they're okay. Apparently they are. I, I asked like about everybody. They They're okay? all doing okay. Thank God. I feel like there's going to be a petition now for you two to do a cheer skit. Sam and Katrina, I'm do just cheerleading. Really into this. You guys answered Excellent. so quickly, I and yeah. I can feel the passion radiating. That's good. We need to do your hair. Like they have, you know, is it closer to God? Was oh, it? yes. The higher the hair, the closer to God. Yeah. It's very Texas. Well, and I guess cheerleading culture is very American, too. We, uh, we have nothing yeah. like that, really, at home. So. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. With the first episode, somebody told me to watch it. And the first episode, I was like, I'm not going to be into this. Like, why would I be into this? And then you're like, oh, my God, I can't go to bed. I need to watch the next one and the next one. Yeah. Uh, great show. All right. We have four audience questions, guys. So let's brace for this. Who do we have first? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Hey. Hi. Of fans of the oh. show. Hi there. <laughs> so I wanted to know, she kind of asked a little bit, but following up, did you study the history of all the many time periods in which the show takes place in order to help you with your roles and being accurate and knowing what you're doing? Um, definitely a little, yeah. Um, you know, when we started the show, I did a lot on, on the 40s and then um, quite a lot about the 1740s as well. And then when we went to Paris, you know, it's nice. That's one, I think, one of the things I think about being an actor that's so great is that we get to study and learn all these new things for a role. And also because Claire has this knowledge she then comes and imparts it, so your character is learning about what's going to happen in his time. And um, but yeah, I think each period we've we've uh, we've touched on has been kind of a fun fun thing to do. I just wish I could travel. My character could travel to different time periods as well. Maybe he can. Or maybe he can. I don't he know why. No, he let's can. not start he that rumor. <laughs> Diana's been like, no. <laughs> is there a time period you guys wish you could go back to? I always say the twenties would be really fun. I think Prohibition era. Lots of champagne. I always, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> I always, well, I used to always say like sort of Paris, the Belle Epoque, that kind of time. But what now I actually want is just multiple times. Yeah. I want, I want to be able to like dip in and out of many different times. Like that person, it's like if you get one wish, what would it be? Three more wishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cheat. How about never you? satisfied. Can we go forward? We're never allowed. To oh, go, go yeah, forward. I want to go forward. Yeah. I want to go forward yeah. a couple of hundred years just to see if we, you know. Take climate Flying change off. seriously. To see if we make cars. it. I know. I want yeah. to see them see if we have, the jetpacks yeah. and the. I want to go to Mars. Exactly. I want did to see everything go to Mars. Did you I see Ad Astra? Yeah, I loved that oh, movie. Yeah. It was incredible. 
I mean, this is, I could see on this conversation forever. I love space and like the future. I think it's so much fun. Have you guys seen um, Arrival? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. One of my favorites. The way they play with the time in that movie, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm in. Um, who's next? Hi. Um, I was wondering, since you took on the roles as producers, what you brought to the, um, to the show and if any of you are interested in doing any directing in the future. That's a great question. Um, well, yes, I would love to direct in the future. <laughs> um, what do we bring to produce? Well, I think, you know, we've been on this show since the very beginning. And at this point, you know, a lot of our writers have, um, they've gone and we've had new writers in. And I think one thing that Sam and I really try to do is try and keep that the same feel and the same tone that we were always trying to achieve from season one. And especially when you have a lot of new directors coming in and out, it's about having that consistency. And I think that that's one thing that's really important to us. And also just keeping the quality of the writing and the quality of the storytelling, um, just keeping it as good as it's always been and, and fighting for, for that. Um, you know, I think, yeah, I think the also, I think, uh, specifically, I think the last couple of episodes, you know, we really, uh, we're very lucky to work with a great director, Jamie Payne, and I think we were very collaborative in in those episodes. It, they needed uh, us all to sort of come together, and um, I think possibly that's probably where we were most influential, and probably on the, the finale. Um, but to be just part of that that process, the writing process, and and we'd love to do more. What episode should we be really looking forward to this season? Ooh. There's a lot. Yeah, I think you know. I think for each one of our characters, there is sort of an episode mm. that kind of lets each one of us shine. Um, there's a lot of standalones as well, isn't yeah. there? There's a lot of like, kind of like season one almost had, there's, they're almost like chapters. And I think this season, we've there's a couple of episodes that are like that. So much happens. It's almost like each episode is its own little story. Like you were saying, it's like a little mini feature for each one. So we'd probably all give you a different answer there. But I think, I think it does really ramp up sort of mid-season. I think it really, a lot of the, the, the drama has a lot of consequences that kind of carries on towards the end of the season. Yeah, the I always find like seven through 12 of this series, it's like, ah, so mm -hmm. much happens. Yeah. Because you have to establish so much, Yeah, you know, then to just blow it all up. Um, <laughs> who's next? You guys have people waiting outside to see you in all kinds of weather conditions. Rain, <laughs> snow, cold, wind, anything. Who would you wait outside in those weather conditions for? Oh, Ooh, good, question. good question. The cast of Cheer, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Um, hmm. Cool. I'll be honest, we're in that weather so much, we'd probably... Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we yeah. just wait in that weather for coffee. Yeah. Um, it's I would Jenna Rollins. I think I would melt into an absolute puddle if I met her. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean... Uh, I, I was lucky to meet uh, Pacino and De Niro and Keitel when I was uh, at an awards recently, and I, I was just kind of uh, like amazed by them and their their fame and their stardom. So yeah, I'd probably I'd like to meet them again, but maybe in a bar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I love Emma Thompson. I think somebody like that um, would be cool, especially because they're the kind of old movie star kind of status where you don't really, they don't do a lot of interviews and things. So then when you do see them, it's like, oh, wow, you're actually, you're there. Mm. That would be cool. I don't know, um, Billy Connolly, maybe. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, the yeah. big yen. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. for him. Yeah. Help him his have car, have a wee chat, hear a wee joke. Play the wee banjo. Aye, play a wee banjo, sing a wee song. Yeah. We're going to see you sing and, and play guitar a little more this season? Unfortunately, probably more than once. <laughs> Probably more than Why once. What, what happened to the guitar, Richard? <laughs> what happened to the guitar? The, the guitar expensive is, vintage the, 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 guitar. The vintage, yeah, the vintage period expensive guitar is... The one that Did there's you only one? Dead. Oh, you broke it. The guitar's dead. Oh, you broke it? Yeah, <laughs> accidentally. I not know that? It was quite an emotional scene. I don't actually know if, it, I don't know if the scene itself made it in well. The guitar didn't. Well, the guitar didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, um, no, there's guitars a were scene, the making of a little bit extra We know what happened to this guitar. I'm very curious. He just got a little really bit more frustrated. Yeah, maybe the guitar could he, got, he, he got a little emotional playing his guitar, which he does now and again, you know, lamenting, and um, the guitar felt the brunt of it. <laughs> was he doing a Johnny Rotten and, like, smashing it on stage? Literally, I I, yeah, I <laughs> smashed the guitar by accident. I went to put it down, but it was in kind of frustration, and it hit, I think, the corner of the bed. 
and literally I was still holding the fretboard <laughs> and the guitar is hanging by the strings. Oh, and wow. I was like, uh, do we have another in. one of these? <laughs> we don't. I really hope that made the edit. Yeah, me too. Yeah, well, make the outtakes, surely. Like, for real, yeah. At least the outtakes. And one more. Um, so I'm a huge fan and I'm so excited for the new season. It's actually coming out the day after my birthday, so... Happy that's birthday! A, a amazing birthday present. Um, so my question for you, when you guys started the show, because the show follows the book so closely, did you like to read far ahead to see what happens to your character, or do you want it to be more spontaneous? Um, I had only read the first book when we started, and I've kind of kept to that book per season. Um, the books, as you know, are so dense and there's so much information that I think if you read too far ahead, you'll just get confused, or at least I will. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've done. Yeah. yeah, I think we've all, I mean, we've all kind of, I have certainly have read, uh, you know, each season you kind of like to dip into the book and I think, but also there's a departure as well. So sometimes you, it's kind of hard to forget, you know, what what have we covered? Or what have what part of that story didn't, didn't we put in there? And... Um, and then also what, what makes the edit as well. So That's the thing. Often you don't want to know more than your character does because you don't want to anticipate. If they don't know it, you don't need to. Um, but for us coming into the show, we didn't have the season to watch, so we were just working off the books. And especially for Brianna, I'm sure Roger too, they changed so much from book two to book four, so I wanted to know the woman that she becomes so that I could you know, know where the character was going because a lot of our audition scenes were actually from season four. Um, but yeah, we have sort of departed from the books a bit in the series, so sometimes you do get a bit confused. You're like, wait, did we actually film that or did that happen in the book? So sometimes it's better to just keep true to the page and just stick to the script. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was really, it's a very valuable resource to have kind of at your disposal, so, you know, why not use it? But coming into the show, we only had, well, Sophie and I only had one episode and that was the, the last episode of season two, so not really a lot to build a character on. So reading the books was really quite helpful for that. Well, guys, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I'm like so many people in this audience. Uh, this show is my escape. It is so fun to sit with you guys for an hour and just go into this different world. And so thank you for all the love and effort you guys put into these characters. Uh, we can feel it. And we cannot wait to see what you do in season five. We don't have to wait that much longer, though. Season five of Outlander premieres on Stars on February 16th. So put your hands together for Katrina, Sam, Sophie, Thanks. and Richard. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.